Hello, my name is Greg McClure, and I serve as the head of R&D for BW Fusion. Today, I'm here to talk to you about an exciting new planter box treatment we call BioBoost, and we will have a limited launch for 2024. While the planter box treatment products are gaining popularity and the marketplace is becoming crowded, let me explain what separates BioBoost from the rest. First, BioBoost can be used in place of talc and graphite. But in addition, what we're really doing is providing a new technology that we're bringing to the marketplace. BioBoost is an environmental product consisting of biology, both bacteria and endophytic fungi, as well as amino acids, additional food sources, and micronutrients used to alter the spermosphere. To my, to my knowledge, there is not a comparable product in the marketplace that combines as many modes of action to affect the water that is first imbibed by the seed. BioBoost helps create a uniformity of the actives such as aminos, sugars, hormones, nutrients, and micro microbial activities within each seed to speed up the plant's metabolism, thus creating more evenness of germination and vigor within each seed. The result helps capture a greater expression of the genetics within each seed. So what does all that mean in layman's terms? Well, let me give you a couple of examples. For those of you uh, uh, who know much about raising calves or the cattle industry, that calf, it's so critical that that first drink is, is a drink of colostrum from the mother. It's not only about the immunities, the immune system is supporting that, that it gets from the mother, but it's also about the nutrition and everything else that that mother is able to pass on. If we were to give that calf a drink of water instead of colostrum, the effect of that calf, that calf for its entire life would never grow right. It would be a runt calf. We've seen that many, many times. It's even, and it's so critical that that colostrum is imbibed by that calf in the very first few minutes. Even, we see even a great difference in, in the calf's health and growth pattern whether that happens in the first hour or whether that happens in four or six or eight hours later. So we know that it's a critical in animals. Well, the truth of the matter is it's also critical in plants. We, we also can, can look about at this and think about all of those things we've learned on social media over the last 10 years. We've seen all the different companies post their flag tests, right? And everyone now knows that the importance of evenness of emergence, if that plant next to it comes up X number of GDUs later, we see a direct we'd see a direct decrease in production from that plant. That plant is not able to express its full genetic potential. And it actually serves as uh, often as a weed or helps degrade or decrease the performance of the plant next to it. You know, I've seen that in, in soybeans for many, many years, right? I've always struggled with the fact that I look at those beans when they're young and very early, we can all tell which ones are the robust beans, which ones are those beans that that we know if we just had enough of that particular bean, we could have 200 bushel beans. But the problem is it's the bean right next to it, right? That is the runt bean, the bean that doesn't produce and serves as a, a weed or something that helps uh, prevent that plant next to it from optimizing or maximizing its potential. That's why we, we've seen soybeans as low as 20,000 population exceed 100 bushels to the acre because those beans were so far apart that we no longer had that competition. But we know ultimately we don't want to be planting beans at 20,000. Uh, so let's just think about this for a minute. Let's dig in. I mean, the goal of BioBoost itself is the optimization of uniformity of germination, vigor, emergence, and plant health in order to reduce the yield drag that comes from those weak plants. So let's dive into the findings from my recent trip to Brazil, and let's dig in deep and look at what we're seeing and the performance of BioBoost. Let's first take a look at the performance of BioBoost soy. What do we see when we apply this product to soybeans? So I was in Brazil back at the end of January, and we did this treatment, and we, we did this in a greenhouse study. Uh, we had planted 10 seeds in each pot, and we had 150 uh, seeds total, 15 of each of untreated and treated. And here you can see, as we measured the emergence by time, seven, eight, nine, 10 days, and ultimately out to 13 days when we finished emergence on these soybeans. Uh, this was when the temperatures were maybe a little bit cooler, but as you can see, there was a significant increase in day seven, almost a 50%, well, a 50% uh, greater increase in emergence from those beans at the beginning. And you can see that hold true, a significant amount of emergence difference uh, throughout the time period. And as we all know that those beans that uh, come up late 
with uh with the and service competition that often those are the weak ones those are the, the what i call like the runt beans well let's dive in and see what that means just a little bit here what does it mean to us but let's look here's a picture very quickly that you can see of the pots that i was referring to and you can see the difference in the plant coming out of the ground now let me say this so that you that everybody understands this there are no hormones put in this plant this is not an effect of gib gibberellic acid that's going to continue to drive that elongation of that plant instead Here's a picture of those pots. Then later, when I was back 45 days later, I want you to see the plants on the right are treated with BioBoost and the ones on the left are untreated. So as you can see, we're not driving, uh, overstimulating that plant and creating an elongation that we don't want in soybeans. Instead, we're building a more robust plant. Look deep into the canopy there. Look at the thickness within the canopy. I wish I had been there a few weeks earlier to see how much healthier, but you can already tell. Look at those lower leaves. Look at the ones in the untreated, how those leaves have, off, have fallen off of most of those plants. And as you can see, we're just now starting to lose those, those leaves on those plants. And you got to remember, there's 10 plants in a pot there. So when you think about that, you, you know, there's very little sunlight, very little air movement that's happening within that pot. So the fact that that plant has held and maintained those leaves that long is really, really a, a positive sign of the plant health. But I wanted you to see that plant from that angle. And then also let's look at it from the top. Look at the fullness of that canopy. Uh, look what that bean is doing there and the, amount, the extra amount of sunlight and stuff that that plant is capturing. Just examples of looking at it from the from a top side view. Now, we, take the, we took those pots and we washed those uh uh, those pots, we uh, removed all of the dirt from them so that you could actually see the entire plant. Here's where I think it, it really becomes a visual for everyone to be able to see. The top row up there, right, That that's two uh, plants out of two different pots there that are untreated and the bottom is treated. Look at it. I tried to lay out each plant from the biggest and healthiest plant on the left to the over to the and uh, weakest one to the right. So as you can see, Really, it's the best plants that we're not really having a significant impact on, right? Because those are the healthy plants. Those are the seeds that had, maybe they were larger seeds. Maybe they were more robust seeds. Maybe they had more carbohydrates in them. I don't know what all causes that, right? Or maybe they were set in an environment uh, where they had were surrounded within that spermosphere with a, a better biological balance. We don't know all the details of that, but what we do know is we can change those plants on the far right. Look at the weaker plants. Look at those on the far right in, in 1A and 1B, and then look at 2A and 2B. That's two different pots. Look, if we move to the next one, here's another perfect example. 1C versus 2C. See those weaker pots on plants on the right-hand side? See how we're, we're ultimately, that's what we're really looking to do is fix those plants, create a more evenness within each plant. So that's those, what I call rump plants, right? We want to, we're allowing those to express their genetics to a much higher potential. Then we took each of those and ultimately, we looked at all of those pots and we, we determined a final stand. And as you can see, we had a 5% increase with BioBoost. In addition to that, we already had a lot more pods on those plants where we had used BioBoost. Look at the percentage of runt plants, right? We had 18%, what I would call runt plants, when the untreated and only 7%. To me, that's where the big difference is and what's going to help drive the yield difference. So as you can see on the, the bottom right corner there, there's a significant difference in this quality of plants. The so Those plants that I would call a quality plant, there's a huge difference in the percentage here when we use BioBoost soy on soybeans. Once again, because of those effects, when we because of that, we're seeing a much larger stem diameter, more nodules uh, per plant, a longer root length, and a heavier root weight. Now let's look at corn. So I took some seed with me when I went down there. And here again, now, now on this trip, we were probably looking at somewhere in that 25 to 30 GDUs per day in the greenhouse. So this corn would have been in optimal conditions, right? And this is corn from the U.S. with the U.S. treatments on it with a 95% germination tag on it. I want you to see, look at the difference. Look at day four, how that, that we really start to separate. So we're looking at somewhere around 100 GDUs, maybe 110 GDUs by that point. At four and a half days, look at that. We're, we're somewhere in that 120, maybe 30 GDUs. And basically every plant is out of the ground at that point. We had one more plant that came up after that point. But Think about the evenness of germination and emergence there, right? Because to have evenness of emergence, we have to have evenness of germination and evenness of vigor. So we're, we are, once again, we're creating a uniformity within each seed as it imbibes that first water, a bit of water. We're accelerating that metabolism to create that a more evenness of plants. Once again, look out here. We're already at 98% by five days. And as you can see, the untreated still had a few plants that came up, but we know those are just going to be yield drag plants and are going to add to the total yield at the end because of what, of the, how they're going to, they, they aren't going to yield well themselves and they're going to serve as a weed next to the productive plant uh, next to them. Now let's take a look at cotton. We also 
we find a, a great benefit of using BioBoost soy on cotton. As we all know, cotton and soybeans are similar uh, in, in their makeup and in the fact that, they're, that they are both uh, in the reproductive stage while also being in the um, vegetative stage. And so it's a lot, it's the same micronutrient package. So we, we applied BioBoost soy uh, that benefits cotton, that it benefits soy. So we applied BioBoost soy on cotton as well. And we had a dramatic difference here. Uh, look at this again. Once again, the germination, the emergence, we see a significant difference. We get out to day six. Look at that where we are uh, almost 8% difference in emergence. But that may not even be the biggest benefit is the emergence. It could be potentially is the difference in the display of phytotoxicity within each plant. Those plants that were untreated, many of those plants, their cotyledons were already uh, big, large portions of them were brown. Um, from the from the seed treatment that was placed on that, a lot of yellowing of leaves, we saw a, a significant difference in the phytotoxicity of those leaves. We also saw the cotyledon size was much, much larger on the cotton, and we know there's a direct correlation between cotyledon size and ultimately to yield on cotton. So these are very, very significant things. And as you can see here, the plot on the left, you can see examples of untreated and those on the right. Look at the evenness and the size of those cotyledons. So the, this is th examples of using BioBoost on three different crops, and I wanted you to be able to see for yourself exactly what we were seeing in our studies. Thank you for tuning in today. And to learn more about BioBoost and other BW Fusion products, feel free to reach out to your local dealer, or you can use the link in the video description. Thank you.